Hello everybody. Um, today we're going to be discussing phylum platyhelminthes, which are also known as flatworms. Um, in this unit, we're going to learn about three different types of worms. Um, platyhelminthes, which are the flatworms, nematodes, which are roundworms, and annelids, which are segmented worms. Um, so just a little bit of basics about flatworms. Um, they are triploblastic acolomates with bilateral symmetry. Um, most are hermaphroditic. Um, most have incomplete guts, um, where there's one opening for the digestive system. Most do have um, semi-complex um, nervous systems with cerebral ganglia around the head region and then a nerve cord that um, spans the whole body. And then there are flame cells, which act as modified excretory cells similar to kidneys. Uh, let's just go through some of the traits. Um, they are acolomates and triploblastic. You can see all three germ layers here. Um, acolomate, if you remember, means there's no secondary body cavity besides the central gut cavity. Um, so central gut, um, here's mesoderm, there's no cavity inside there. Uh, here's the nervous system that spans the body, so it's a collection of nerves around the head region. That's the cerebral ganglion. Um, and then the nerves that span the body are like the lateral nerve cords. Um, and here is the excretory system, um, which also spans the body. Uh, the excretory system um, is made mainly of these cells called flame cells. They're called flame cells because they look exactly like a lit flame here. Um, and those help to filter out um, toxins and waste from the blood. Um, so most of what we're going to learn today is about the different types of flatworms. Um, and so I'm going to take you through examples of each of the different types here. Um, so the first class is cl class Tuberellia. Um, those are known as planaria. Um, those are the only non-parasitic flatworms we're going to talk about. Um, they have a ciliated surface. Um, these little organisms regenerate if cut. Um, so they have the ability to regenerate and in a normal year we do an experiment with them where we cut them in half um, different ways um, and we see how quickly and how well they grow back. Um, but they can do this process on their own. Um, sometimes in extreme situations, what they do is they get trap themselves underneath a rock um, and physically pull themselves apart so they can undergo regeneration. Um, most are free living. Um, they're found in um, a lot of freshwater situations. Um, think of streams and lakes, ponds. Um, if you actually go to shadow cliffs, um, and you scoop up some of the water in the rocks. Um, you can actually find these little guys living there. Um, most do sexual reproduction, um, where there is a very um, interesting process, um, which is known as penis fencing. Uh, penis fencing occurs between two flatworms uh, because most are hermaphrodites. Um, they actually fight to see which one is going to become the female because females have to put in a lot more time, energy, and resources um, to giving birth than a male does, right? A male just gets to pass sperm on and then move on um, from the situation in the animal kingdom. And so what they do um, is they use their penises and almost have like a sword fighting contest and the first flatworm to stab the other flatworm with their penis and inject the sperm. Uh, the one that injects the sperm uh, ends up being the male moves on and the one that um, gets injected with the sperm is the one that's the female and has to provide the nutrients and resources uh, for the growing young. Interesting fact there. Um, so here's what they look like. Um, you can see an eye spot at the top. Um, you can also see um, kind of running along the side, um, the flame cells and nerve cells that actually uh, make up part of its body. Um, they are able to attach to the substrates. Um, so they have these attaching and releasing glands which secrete like viscid liquid. So like almost like glue that allows them to stick to the substrate. Um, you can also see their mouth isn't where you think it would be. Um, the mouth is down here um, in the tail region, right here where it says mouth opening and pharynx. Um, and remember, there's one opening, right? So um, 
this is where food enters, goes up through the body, um, gets digested through the digestive cavity, spread throughout the body, um, and then waste gets released out that same hole. Um, and then this is just what it would look like um, under a microscope. Right. Next up, we're going to start talking about the parasitic flatworms. Um, so the first group of parasitic flatworms are known as flukes. They are endoparasites, which means they live inside the body. Um, one of the hallmark traits of flutes is that they are, or they have a very complex life cycle. I'll go over the life cycle in general, but the life cycle basically has an intermediary host, whether in a juvenile or young stage, and an adult definitive host, um, where they are in a larger animal. Most are hermaphroditic and reproduce sexually um, inside of its adult host. Um, and then there's some asexual reproduction that occurs at different times of the life cycle, similar to um, a jellyfish's life cycle where it went through strobilation um, to make lots of medusa. Um, similar things happen in these flukes. Um, here's the general body cavity or, or the body structure where there's an oral sucker um, that connects, brings um, liquid and food into the intestine, spreads throughout the body. Um, there's reproductive organs inside, uh, bladder, testes, um, all of these parts. Um, just a few examples. Here's the Chinese liver fluke. Um, it infects the liver um, of humans and um, cattle. Um, there are 50 million people worldwide um, that get this fluke on a yearly basis. It can cause corrosis of the liver, diarrhea, and pain. Um, it's life cycle. Um, let's just start, I guess, at the human. Um, so the human has it in its liver. Um, if it leaves the human in the human feces, um, and the human feces make its way to soil, um, then it would be picked up by a snail. Uh, oftentimes it lives in the foot of a snail um, for a small amount of time until it can form different... Um, until it can form um, different stages of its life, right? So the egg comes out containing a um, It hatches um, and it ends up being eaten by the snail, lives in its foot. Um, next, it produces a saccharia, uh, which is the next stage of its life cycle. Um, that eventually develops a little bit, makes its way into um, the tissues of a fish. Um, and then if a human eats a fish um, that is not properly cooked, it can contract um, this flatworm and the cycle continues. Um, that's generally how a lot of these fluke life cycle goes, um, where there is a mollusk um, that's the juvenile or intermediate host and some kind of larger animal, be it a fish, um, a cattle, a pig, um, that ends up being the adult host. And then if a human eats that thing and it's not fully cooked, um, it's going to end up getting that fluke. Um, Um, here is the sheep liver fluke, passed in sheep and cattle. Um, it main um, symptoms, if you have it, are extreme weight loss um, and then vomiting, diarrhea. Um, here is the life cycle of the liver fluke. Again, um, intermediate host is a snail. Um, and then um, its saccharia makes its way into the grass lives in the grass for a little while until a cow eats it. Uh, cow eats it, it can pass on to a human or just release the eggs um, and start this cycle all over again. Um, intestinal fluke um, found mainly in men and pigs, affects about 10 million people worldwide, hemorrhaging, abscesses of the small intestine. Um, life cycle is similar, um, snails, the intermediary host, um, finds its way into a pig. Um, then makes its way into a human. Um, lung fluke works pretty much the same way, except this one can be fatal um, if it finds its way into a human because um, it can cause extreme bleeding inside the lungs. Um, lung fluke distribution is not often found in the United States, which is good news. Um, it's found um, in South America and in Southeast Asia mainly. Um, here is what um, the liver fluke would look like. So this is a liver from somebody who died of hemorrhaging. Uh, and what they found is there, there are 180 blood flukes found um, in its liver. 
And so all of these little white spots inside the liver, um, those were all flukes that were found. All right, so that's the first um, type of parasitic flatworm. The second is called schistoma. Schistoma infect about 200 million people worldwide, um, and there's actually about a million deaths per year. Um, there are separate sexes, and instead of um, relying on being ingested purely, um, oftentimes they can pierce through the skin in weak points, um, like hair follicles on the skin, um, and make their way into your body like that. Um, this is what a schistoma would look like in a blood vessel, and oftentimes they're known um, to clog blood vessels. Um, and cause damage that way. Um, the life cycle of a schistoma here, let's say it's in an adult uh, in an adult human, uh, it can make its way out um, either from the urinary bladder um, or for the digestive tract, find its way into water, then um, finds its way into a snail, um, then it forms its adult form inside the snail, um, leaves the snail, infects a human, um, usually in the water penetrating through the skin somehow. Um, one example, this is swimmer's itch, um, which is caused by schistoma dermatitis, um, where uh, the saccharia, which is the you know, stage right before the adult stage, um, can penetrate um, the wrong host, which in this case is a human. The skin ends up becoming irritated and inflamed um, and um, leaves the person uh, itchy for a good period of time. Um, in this case, not only is a human the, or the adult host, but also uh, things like waterfowls, ducks, swans, geese, and so on. Um, next is we have class cestoda, um, which are tapeworms. Tapeworms don't have a digestive system. Instead, they um, receive nutrients throughout their whole body. It's not centralized in the digestive system. Um, they can reach up to 60 feet long. Um, individual units are called proglottids. Um, and each proglottid has its own reproductive structure and organ. Um, and so we can see here, um, here's the close-up of a proglottid where it has both ovary and testes. So each one of these sections um, is basically a reproduction factory that can make eggs which is part of the ingeniousness of um, almost all parasites, but also of this um, tapeworm, right? Here's the head. Um, from the head, it starts to grow individual proglottids. Um, and each section it gets, it's capable of making more eggs, thus passing on more of its genetic information. Uh, somebody who has a tapeworm, one of the signs of having a tapeworm is seeing eggs in the feces. The longer the tapeworm, the more eggs it releases because the more reproductive units it has. Um, the scloex is the head. That's what keeps it attached to its host. Um, and the proglottid is the little sections, which are basically these reproductive factories. Um, there are different types of um, tapeworms. Here's a pork tapeworm, which works a little bit different and attaches in the host of the intestine or the um, the wall of the intestine um, where it has these hooks and suckers um, and then it grows in size. Um, there's a cattle um, tapeworm, there's a human tapeworm. Um, and in fact, people used to purposely um, infect themselves with tapeworms. Uh, we're talking like 40s, 50s, 60s here. Uh, and there was even ads for the fad diet of, you know, infecting yourself with a tapeworm because how a tapeworm grows is it uh, basically anchors itself in your um, small intestines, absorbs all the nutrients from the food while well, you don't get much and then it grows in size. And so what would happen is people could eat basically whatever they want and they wouldn't grow in size. Um, the tapeworm would in their body. Uh, the issue was then getting rid of the tapeworm because this thing can grow um, very, very large in size. Um, if you're brave enough, go look at tapeworm removal uh, videos on YouTube. Um, it will make you maybe a little bit sick, but definitely never try this diet on your own after watching those videos. Um, and so those are our um, notes. Um, took you through some of the basic examples. Um, a lot of information you're going to get from watching the little separate videos I link um, on each of these. 
it might be a little bit gross, um, but you will be able to survive um, and maybe be a little bit smarter for it afterwards, but maybe a little freaked out too. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a good day.